Hey folks, um, it's Richard Miller. I'm with Facts Working People, uh, the blog Facts Working People. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, I'm a retired trade unionist and I was uh, 30 years, well, yeah, about 30 years a member of AFSME and 25 or more of those active in AFSME, quite, quite, quite active as a rank and file worker. I was a, a, a equipment operator, ended up, I started as a labourer, ended up equipment operator in a water district. And um, <clears throat> I've wrote, written a lot about this on the blog and stuff. And I retired out of there as a, um, a, a, a equipment operator. Um, sort of equipment operator. <laughs> Anyway, so the reason I sort of want to talk about, I'm not active now, but I had a, a great deal of success, as did my local. I had a great deal of success in the struggle within the trade union movement to change it. And um, I was active mostly in the workplace, at my union, uh, my union hall. I was a re elected dele delegate to many different bodies, national conventions, central labor bodies, and so forth. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I, I, I uh, talked to some folks back home about the trade union movement here a little bit and the strikes and I've also gotten some into some discussions because I've written about the trade union leadership in particular and had a, a, a very strong difference in approach to people like the leadership of uh, DSA, Labour Notes, uh, these people that, 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 who are seen as uh, major or Labour leaders, they even call them Labour leaders or later ex expert, but David Bacon, who I was in the Central Labour Council with for years, Bill Fletcher, who I don't know, have nothing against the guy, but he was a, um, a, 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 a comes out of the union bureaucracy, was an advisor to uh, Sweeney, and then t as when he was head of SEIU, and then to the AFL-CIO, you know, that's, that's not a rank and file fighter on the shop floor or anything. You don't get to be an advisor to the head of the AFL-CIO unless you're safe. Uh, um, Mac Jane McElvey, I've written about her and so forth. So um, I wanted to talk about, because I have differences and have written about differences with that approach. And so th for me, the, the question of the trade union leadership also, there's the other side. I believe when I'm, I'm in a group, the CWI, the American section of that is now Socialist Alternative. I'm not in it anymore. It's the only left group I ever joined. I was expelled from it uh, um, in the 90s. And, uh, I, and, and that freed me up, actually. I'm, uh, I'm a better for it, but I don't regret joining it. But they, w one thing that they met, uh, uh, while I was drawn to them, was one, they oriented toward the working class, and two, they helped me fight against the, the, the policies of the union bureaucracy, the leadership of the trade union movement. They helped me deal with them. And if you want to change the trade unions that, and fight to, to transform the trade unions, you've got to deal with them. Now, the, as I say that, there are groups on the left, uh, one I can think of, that just thinks the unions, argues that the unions are basically not workers' organizations, the trade union leadership, they just ignore them. I just don't agree with that, because I still believe that in, as the struggle develops, well, let me, let me say first, when I joined the CWI, what attracted me also was that their, their argument, their position, that uh, and when the workers move into struggle, this was the early 80s, they will, they will turn to these traditional organizations and they will struggle to change them and they will do that again and again. And um, that made sense to me as a, a fighter in the union, as a shop steward in the union. And, uh, and, and so that was a, around in the 80s. So I became a delegate to my Central Labour Council. I was alone in there in my political views and I couldn't have functioned that way if I didn't theoretically believe it just just shows you that strength is, has to do with mental what you think about the world around you mentally is uh, that didn't happen I believed it would but it didn't when I could see that it wasn't going to happen I thought it was in the 80s with those big strikes we had but when I, I drew the conclusion that they were wrong that wasn't going to happen there wouldn't be a major there was a partially in the 80s but there wouldn't be a huge eruption a movement in there splits that took place sort of a John L. Lewis type of stuff from the 30s and and, and that a revolutionary situation might develop out that didn't happen. I, I think they were wrong on timing, but I don't believe they were wrong in general. And so that's why I disagrees, disagree with those that, um, and I, I, I disagree with those that believe that just ignore the trade union leadership. And I've had, had that all, all the time. So I remember one of the writers at Labour Notes said something because of a failed uh, uh, organizing drive. They don't know how to organize. Oh, yes, they do. They have a strategy. 
they do know how to organise. And, and way back in, I think it was the 90s, when that Chrysler plant in Kokomo, Indiana, rejected a, a, a leadership's con a, 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 a leadership's um, contract recommendations, they sure mobilised then to make sure they get it through. But the Cleveland Five in, in, in um, in North Carolina, another UAW local, when that those, that local went on strike, the leadership opposed it. They sure mobilized then. Boeing up in, in, in Detroit, they did it. Longview, you, you see it all the time. They, are, they, they can organize. And what they do is they will organize in order to suppress any movement below that threatens their view and threatens their relationship with the employers based on labor peace and their, the love of the market. Capitalism must, must be defended at all costs. And when it goes into crisis, they move to defend it. So to ignore them, in my view, if I thought that that, that, uh, that uh, 40 and organisations with 14 million workers in it, in them, would 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 have no effect on society whatsoever, I just don't agree with that. And those that say that the leadership, you don't, they'll never do anything. That's not true. That's just not true. It's abandoning the unions that were built by working class people. It's abandoning them to this right wing bureaucracy that leads them and the social conditions will change that relationship. And I don't believe they will uh, necessarily, they will be the first to move anymore, but they will be engulfing the struggles ahead and they will play a key role. And they will play a key role because all the major sectors are still organized here. Um, so, so they will. We have to deal with them, and to not deal with them, it, 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 do it uh, at your peril. Um, so the uh, um, and the thing is, is I've, the, since I thought that, it's quite clear that they, the labour bureaucracy, the leadership atop of the labour movement, have tightened their grip on the on the organisation. And one of the, the reasons is they got they've got an armed vast army of staffers. Of, of full-time employees, that that's their role to ensure that the concessionary policies of the trade union leadership are carried out and, 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 and help to suppress any movement from below that threatens that. And also, alongside that, they have the Democratic Party. If, if, if any time, uh, historically it's been that way, when there's a movement that looks like it's coming forward, they, they'll suck that movement, draw that movement in to the Democratic Party like Bernie Sanders has and others have, uh, and that with there it will die a death. The, the Democratic Party cannot even get me dental care. So believe me, that, that we that we need an alternative that and that that's to, to that and that's another uh, that's another um, uh, uh, that's another that's another subject. But the the main thing is is that how did I. When I look back at my uh, fighting the boss, most bloody workers, you can get a conservative team, so bloody old, uh, crusty old conservative team, sir, knows you've got to fight the boss. Fighting the, you, uh, campaigning internally against the policies of our leadership, the concessionary policies of our leadership, that's a more complicated question. There are guys. And, and yes, there's corruption in the trade unions. Of course there is. There's con corruption in society. But the big problem with the leadership we have is that they're bankrupt ideologically. They're corrupt ideologically. Capitalism goes into crisis, they move to bail it out. We can't avoid a fight with them. We can't. They, they, uh, and, and it's uh, not only that, it's an abandonment of our organizations to these people. The main thing always, like the, well, some of the names I've mentioned, McElvey, Bill Fletcher, uh, 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 there's, there's a whole ton of them. A lot of the folks in Labour Notes uh, uh, are like that. doesn't mean they're not decent people. And Labour Notes has the ability to, uh, to organize some incredible meetings. And they have some potential. And in my opinion, they, they don't approach the trade union leadership. A lot of them are from the lower levels of the trade union leadership. But, the, but the, 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 you cannot get into the ranks of the trade union leadership in the present situation without you, you build your power in the workplace. That's what I did, and I was taught to do that. I didn't much some magical thing come out of my head. I was taught to do that. The, the old black guys I used to work with uh, taught me on the job that we, we parted ways in some ways politically in other areas, but, but, but they taught me how to fight. They taught me how to survive in the work, in the, at the shop floor level. And the group I joined helped me with the theoretical, understand the world around me. Why, why American workers weren't doing this? Why, why does this happen? Why isn't that happen? Why isn't the bureaucracy fighting and so forth? And so, and so, um, and, and, and so, so the thing is, is to have yourself root. You can't join the, be brought in 
And that's what happened. That's the problem with a lot of these so-called labor experts. So they come out of academia. So many of them are in left groups. They go into the, they're brought into the trade union leadership because they have skills. They're smart asses, a lot of them. Come out of university. I think a couple of them I mentioned are PhDs. They come in there. They, 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 they come into that movement. They hide their, they have a, their political meetings, their lefty meetings outside of the labor movement. They don't bother uh, to bring up their views. And they get they, 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 they suck at their part of the problem. They end up part of the problem. The, the, I remember when I got into the Central Labor Council. I was elected on in my local on no support for Democrats and the Republicans. And that was the only one that stood up and voted against the uh, COPE committee reports, which endorsed Democrats or Republicans. And yet there were communists in there, the Socialist Party was in there, uh, ISO used to have people in there. You see? So you've got to be rooted among your workers in, on the job shop floor and in the in, 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 and in the local itself. You've got to be rooted there, you've got to you've got to campaign around ideas, not just democracy in the abstract. A lot of these groups will have uh, teams just for a democratic union. What does that mean? The, 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 the bureaucracy will tell you they're democratic, and most unions are more democratic than other, un, under other forces in society. The, you, you, if you want to tr struggle or change the trade union movement, start with your own local. And you won't get people to organize and drag them away from the, the dr drudgery of life and the responsibilities of life, the little league and everything else, based on that. Just, we, we want democracy. You better produce something more more than that, you, because you know why. During, during that, minor, that that um, the carton to strike in 1999, I remember they walked off the job because they weren't getting the raises of the uh, other other skills on their the workers saw that they weren't in a, in in a good economy. They weren't getting the raises, and they they walked off the job at uh, a, a, a wildcat strike. Now, do you think if the labor bureaucra bureaucracy had come back with $5 an hour for raises, they'd have walked off the job? No. They'd say, well, they're some bastards, but look what they got us, you know? So the thing is, I just wanted to share these comments because some people respond, a couple of people sent me emails and I was talking to some folks back in the UK and it made me think about my history. And I don't know if it's any use to people and if you want to c communicate with me about it. Um, Richard Mellor, Facts of Working People. If you see this on YouTube, please share it, like it, uh, share it on social media. If you, you don't have to agree with all of it, you can even criticize it, you know, it's okay. As long as I try to keep things decent. All right, so Richard Mellor, Facts of Working People. Thanks a lot.